Taurus, something is almost over, my love. Um, this is something that has been start, stop, start, stop. Um, uh, never really got off the ground type of energy. That's what I'm picking up in the, in the, um, channel energy. Um, but you standing your ground, standing up for what you believe in, um, your integrity, your morals. It's been a very challenging, tumultuous time, but you took the high road in a situation and, Congratulations. That's all I'm going to say. Because I feel in this energy where it's like it's almost over. It's almost a wrap. The cycle is almost closed. So hanging in there, okay, staying steadfast and strong and resilient is, is, is giving you a lot of confidence, right? A lot of like, you know, your self-worth, you know what you will and will not settle for. And I feel like there's this mirroring effect, right? There's this flicker. I'm keep seeing like an image of a flicker where um, things may be picking up and then they slow down, they die down. You know, the energy wasn't really gaining the consistent momentum. All right. So in this start stop energy, there could have been several false starts or several instances where you felt as if something was going to it was going to be now or like oh, I get excited. It's about to be now. I'm about to get my person. And then it's like, oh, I got to wait again or it's like excited again and then oh, waiting again. So that energy is is changing. The cycle is closing and it's like either way you're good, but for whatever's coming through through this channel reading today, I feel like spirit wants to talk to those of you that have been in um, hot code situations, start stop situations um, or gaining momentum in a certain area. This could be in regards to your career, your finances, your abundance. It may have not been consistent. You may get like an influx in one day, but it's not like steady. So there, there was a lot of spell work being targeted towards you. There was a lot of... Um, a lot of fighting going on, a lot of chaos energy that was kind of affecting the flow of things. Okay, it had a lot to do with your self worth, um, affecting your self esteem, affecting your your bag as well. That's what I'm hearing. A lot of you, your bag was affected in correlation with a particular person, or just getting uh, a lot of hate and animosity thrown your way. So you went into like witness protection or or you needed to be in spiritual protection. And in order to protect you, spirit had to take you um, to a high road, a high place. You had to get on higher elevation or higher ground. So if you're new, welcome to our love nest over here on Talk Taurus Tarot with Talk Tequila. If you're returning, welcome back. Look at that. Bottom of the deck is conflict. Yeah, there was a lot of conflict. A lot of events that led up to this moment of completion. It took a lot to get to this part. That's what I'm hearing. To get to this status. For some of you, it's a status. For for majority of you, it's like to get to this space of feeling completely confident in yourself. You went through a lot of shit. All right. If y'all returning, welcome back. Be aware of anyone in the comment section pretending to be me. All personal reading information, the text message number that you can text me on, and the website link is all in my description box. All right, Spirit, what's your channel message to Taurus? All of these things were meant to happen for a reason. It's like, y'all know when, you, when a person is giving birth, if you've ever had kids... And you're and you're having like dilations or you're you're you are contracting back to back so much where it feels so exhausting. That's the 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 sensation that I'm picking up on where there are some people that have a child in 30 minutes to an hour. And if they're at zero centimeters and they're making it all the way to 10 centimeters, imagine how many contractions have to come back to back and how few breaks in between each contraction you have to go through just to make it to 10, 10 centimeters, just to get to the completion of being ready to push. So you're at this point where you're ready to push. OK, but instead of pushing, you let go. All right. And this let go or this surrender is allowing this to come through okay 
vast universe it's allowing it to come through i'm telling you and i know that's a very crazy example but spirit showed it to me like tt think of think of what it feels like if a person is having a baby really fast it's uncomfortable it hurts so your development has been very fast you've been contracting and going through test after test flicker after flicker um spirit has been really testing your patience okay through these experiences and it's, and it's all and it's all been to test what you're willing to accept. It's all been to to test how you stand your ground is what you're willing to do to have a person or what you're willing to do for yourself on your self love journey. Right. Um, ooh, angel of love. So you're having a season of celebration come in. Yes, peace, harmony, celebration, getting back out there, tapping back into your nature. All right, it's time to be a Taurus again, okay? It's time to go out there, hot girl summer, anyone? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Some of you are putting yourself back out there on social media. You're starting to post again or you're about to start posting again um, after taking a hiatus or a detox. Um like you had to get yourself together. Got to get myself together. And I find my um, to you. I heard that song. Got to get myself together. Someone's finding their way back to you. It's safe for you to love. You might be wondering like, if it's safe for you to love. I'm seeing Archangel Raphael. Okay. <clears throat> Something was just for fun. Um, so I am picking up strong, like friendship type relationships. So those of you that have, you know, you talk to people just for fun or just for casual fun, nothing really too serious. Um, occasionally text messaging each other, things like that, but nothing really ever getting off the ground. That energy is changing. Someone has really been feeling like they. Like you're that person that they haven't got an opportunity to really explore a love relationship with. You've been on a break from this person. You guys haven't been communicating. That's what I'm picking up here. So show me angel of love. Ooh. So you're feeling a lot more loving, okay, Taurus, Queen of Cups energy. You're not as cold, emotionally unavailable. You're not as super independent or hyper independent. You have a lot more love to give, companion to share. Um, your, your way in which you love on yourself, for sure. This is strong self-love energy. You're not so quick to jump into relationships or just jump in head first into situations. You really take time to get to know people now, date people now. Um, you're in this energy of like, yeah, I'm open to love, but I've learned a lot in my life from my experiences of how people can be very flaky, how people can be very inconsistent and you're not settling. Okay, you're taking your time to get to know people. I like the Knight of Pentacles energy. Yes. So. It's like we can go out, we can have dates, we can enjoy each other's company while we're together, have great conversations, teach each other things, learn from each other. And then we take a break and we go our separate ways and it's going to go longer. So you're looking for a, a steady love. Oh, snap. You're looking for a steady love, a secure love, a relationship that's that's emotionally reciprocal but consistent in how you develop, right? So we're going from the page of pentacles to the knight of pentacles. This is what you call healthy, mature relationships. Okay. Not being up all hours of the night, worried or unsure of if someone really wants to be with you. Um, you know, if they have good intentions towards you, for many of you, you're going off and you're giving this to yourself and you're taking a break from all relationships in general. I'm seeing going back to school as well is highlighted in your reading. 
yeah, I feel like you're going to pick up a trade or go to school for something. Um, really pour all your love into yourself and your pursuits of happiness. And as you're doing that, you're also healing from your emotional, the emotional turmoil, right? So this is like thriving throughout your healing experience. Excuse me. Releasing and purging each relationship that hasn't worked, each failure that didn't work, didn't successfully work out in a relationship. Or if you like someone and it didn't go anywhere, it was only friends with benefits or strictly platonic. You're no longer holding on to potential in people you're putting all of that love and attention and nurture into the potential of what you create for yourself what you develop within yourself um and i feel like at times in the past you gave yourself like a chin up type of situation by saying it's going to be their loss oh don't worry about it it's their loss and a lot of times we could do that to kind of like boost our ego a little bit when when our ego has been bruised or we've been rejected or denied love we can tend to empower ourselves through our ego like I'm going to reinvent myself I'm going to love myself I'm going to give myself all these different achievements right and it's a way to kind of get back on the saddle after you've been knocked down so many times by love, by disappointment, by betrayal. And when you think about the idea of getting back out there and dating again, at times, I do feel like that emotion comes up where you want to protect that most vulnerable aspect about yourself that's always taken for granted in other people. Um, and sometimes, you know, that first initial decision it looks like we have to look at the other person and say you know it's their loss I was a great catch I I do deserve love and then as you continue on your journey you start to see how it wasn't really a loss to them or to you but more or less an experience that benefited you so this is like your level of thought process and maturity around what you have after going through loss or disappointment it's like you have so much more now. And once upon a time, you can remember when you would hide away the most best version of yourself in a, as a way to, to defend and protect yourself. But now you have a more mature and consistent way of expressing your love. And it's no longer... At the beck and call of another person. It's no longer self-sacrificing. And so I see like there's a moment right before you embark on this next phase of your journey. Where you look back and you see all the things. All the lessons that you've learned. And I feel like in this space you're extracting all the good things. Even through the pain. There's still good things to remember. Um, and I feel like you're going to make those those memories work for you, um, whether that's putting it into a book, your art, OK, writing it into song, dance, speaking about it, vlogging about it, just journaling about it. Like I'm seeing so many different productive forms of healthy ways of emotionally healing after heartbreak or after disappointment without your heart chakra being closed up. So whatever practices or methods of therapy that you come up with, it's going to work for you. It's working for you already. And spirit just wants you to remain consistent. No matter who comes in and out of your life with the eight of cups, just remain consistent with these practices that you've been developing thus far. Oh, snap. Yeah, I feel like some of y'all came across someone that was like really extremely non-committal. Um, very non-committal. And this person may have a tendency of affecting you emotionally. 
because you may love the conversation with this person. You may really enjoy the peace that comes from, you know, communicating with this person. They're very wise. They have a lot of wisdom, right? They very they could be very witty, witty as well. Um, very honest. You may respect that about this person, but it like it's like at times. This person would only want to flirt, you know, or have the occasional mm, nightcap type of conversation. I feel like you dealt with you dealt with the, that type of energy, those type of connections where it's like mm, this person is just talking to me to bypass time or this person is just in my life because they see the potential in you, but they don't really, it's not enough to potential or whatever to really settle down with you or, or to create a family with you. It's just more or less like, mm, let's just see where it goes types of energy. I feel like you dealt with a lot of that. Hmm. And I feel like someone's going to text you if they haven't already. They want to travel and see you or they would they want to know when's the next time you're going to be in town uh, or vice versa. Something about when you're when's the next time they're going to see you. It feels like a very casual way to ask this question or to communicate that it's like indirect, passive aggressive, not really forward. So right now, even though you may be feeling like an emotional stir, I still feel like you're being tested about standing up for yourself, okay? And standing your ground without being defensive to this person's pursuit or without being defensive to this person coming towards you and initiating this type of conversation without being irritated, right? Without being annoyed. I feel like something is no longer annoying you. Like this person comes back around every so often um, just to see like if there's still an option in your life or if they if, if they still got it, I heard. So there's someone that comes back around into your life just to see if they still got it, If you know, on a friendly tip. Like I'm just seeing what y'all you're doing, what you're up to. But you know that they're calling you because they just want to see like what you're up to, if you still emotionally have feelings for them. And they leave you feeling extremely confused because it's like, why initiate conversation with me if you don't have any intentions? Um, it's fun for this person because they're very lonely. They're someone that's very lonely. Um, they're, they are generous, but they they express their generosity through things. That's what I'm seeing here. Like they just give to a person and that's their version of love. And it's because they haven't really allowed themselves to have fun and to really embrace what a love relationship could look like mm -hmm. and then it's like they can go a long time you may not ever hear from them for a while but it's like every time you try to get over this person and heal past this person they start coming in and manipulating the energy um you know, wanting to talk about the past and how they wish that you guys could have been together or whatever. Okay, I'm back. And the crazy part about all of this energy is that this person still doesn't have any specific motion or direction in which they want to go with you. Um, but the thought or the, the thought of losing you forever is hard for this person. They like to watch you work as well. This person may know you like your work schedule or what time you go to work or what you do for work or they know where you work at. Okay. So this person definitely spends a lot of time daydreaming, fantasizing about a life they could have with you. And they hide themselves like they're good on their own. They're, they're like they're not lonely. 
someone's about to make it very well known to you. They're about to call you. Someone wants to work on a relationship with you and you have a past person that feels you finally moving on and, and really open to love again and not just solely focused or obsessed with work like they may be. And because you're outgrowing them, they're going, they're emotionally manipulating the ethers. Okay. In the spiritual realm, they're sending you a lot of projected emotional stimulation. Okay. And it's because they feel like you have a potential soulmate coming into your life. Okay. Like you're really genuinely open to love. You're not cold and emotionally unavailable unavailable this person feels like you are healing beyond them and it makes them want to hold on to you but because they can't necessarily talk to you directly they manipulate the energies to make your transition even more tumultuous i'm hearing yeah it's their way of holding on to you like your mind they can be very possessive as well I also pick up this energy that whoever this person is, there's someone that um, they may take care of their sisters, their brothers, their family members. They may send a lot of money to their family. They have a long line of family members in and out of wedlock, I'm hearing. Yeah, they want to make you like angry a little bit or they want to see that you care. Someone's going to try to make you jealous as well. Um, I'm also hearing that your person is going through this. So, so for some of you, your person has a third party energy that's holding on to them. And their whole objective is to make you completely irritated that you close the door on your person. And you're like so close of really closing out this entire lesson or this entire experience but if this karmic partner can get you to become so irritated and frustrated with all of the the emotional projection or the the spiritual psychic emotional like manipulation that's going on that you would kind of say something to your person that would hurt them well enough to where this karmic partner they would just run back into this karmic partner's hands so that is the purpose of this karmic energy trying to stop you from seeing the whole picture seeing the whole the entire all facets of the story they want you to be cold calculated um malicious in what you say they want your words to hurt so bad to the point where this person kind, kind of gets it out of their head that you guys could ever reconcile or heal so when this person attempts to come towards you if you're under that spell black magic whatever dark entities that's been sent your way to confuse you you will be emotionally unavailable as well, or you will be extremely um, cold where you won't even notice that this person is trying to connect with you because you're not feeling your heart chakra. You're in a cold state of mind as well. So there's a karmic energy trying to embody your energy. So you can miss a phone call or when someone calls you, you kind of Let your pain um, sabotage itself from getting what you've always wanted. Yeah. Giving you like, you know, when you cranky or you hangry and then you say something like, oh, my God, wanting you to react. OK, so these energies want you to react in a way that is self-serving, but cold hearted. And when this person feels as if there is no coming back, then they'll just sign themselves up to the sentence. 
okay but the there's a manipulation from a this could be a baby mama baby father um third party energy but i am picking up very strong karmics are not playing with y'all right now they doing anything to literally prevent this heart chakra activation from anchoring any further than it already has yeah wanting y'all to betray each other mm -hmm. being stuck on the past and unable to unable to see in y'all current state of mind or y'all current perspective that those are limiting beliefs and that you can really get yourself out of that thought process you can really you know fight through this you don't have to surrender to these karmic energies trying to tell y'all what's supposed to become of y'all relationship y'all got the spiritual connection for a reason can nobody tell you what you already know and at some point three of pentacles y'all gotta work together or learn how to work spiritually in tandem with each other yeah even if y'all are in absence from each other, y'all are having to learn how to work spiritually in tandem versus trying to do it all by yourself and not and not allowing your spiritual counterpart, even at a distance, if y'all not physically together, you know, it hurts them to not be able to ex feel your love, even if y'all not together. You know what I'm saying? When y'all both close up your hearts and become cold hearted, the only thing left to do is karmic energies to prey on you both. You know what I'm saying? To trick y'all. Eight of Pentacles. So working on y'all spiritual union, working on y'all spiritual connection apart is beneficial and is crucial during this time as these doors and portals are closing to these karmic relationships these karmic partners these karmic all this karmic shit that's coming up the purpose has been served already and the doors are trying to close but your spiritual connection is is shaky that's what i'm seeing here because it's like hyper independent too independent um too secretive too prideful too focused you know what i'm saying it's just extremes of a lot of things versus getting into your heart chakra and allowing where you spill where your heart is spontaneously guiding you towards you trusting that without a shadow of a doubt so yeah that energy is going to be there um just letting go of that expectation of the destination and really just knowing what you know because you know it to be true. Yeah, I do feel like someone is clearing up time on their agenda. All right. One of the spiritual confirmations for some of you, there's someone that's clearing up space in their daily schedule or their busy schedule to spontaneously come towards you. All right. And even they are sending you subliminal messages, synchronicities, communication, you know, encouraging you to take some time off yourself. So y'all are in sync in tandem with each other. Yeah, I'm telling you. This person, this is someone that's been watching you grow and elevate, Taurus, on your journey. They've been watching you grow and elevate. They've been watching and, and, and seeing how you have really committed yourself. Like, this is a real thing for you. Your purpose is a real journey for you. Like, this is something that you're willing to go the distance on. This ain't just some, you know, once in a lifetime thing. Like, you're, it's like now you've inspired your person as well to focus more on their purpose. Mm -hmm. And the more that you focus on your purpose and you're committed, it's like no matter what, it's, it's like one of the most sexiest things, okay, for... Whoever's divine energy that's coming up, it's like you being able to 
balance out all your responsibilities and still maintain and hold shit down. Uh, it's like I saw that video, that clip of Rihanna. Like she was like, I don't know how many months pregnant, but her ass was was on a platform in the sky. And even though she was pregnant, she was still dancing, doing her routines. It didn't stop the show. It didn't stop her business. It didn't stop her her shine. That's what this person loves. That That's like the most attractive thing that this person is like, damn. How the fuck did I let that slip away? And it's just because you just have it. Okay, this could be you. You could be a male Taurus feeling this way about somebody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, someone has a lot of recognition, public recognition, publicity. Um, and it's like they, they juggle two responsibilities. They could have multiple responsibilities, but they make it look so easy. It's like everything around them is peaceful. Okay, the animals love them. Um, they don't have to say anything. It's just a natural aura, you know, where the fishes follow this person or you, Taurus. Animals become calmer around you. Everybody that comes in your vicinity or yours, Taurus, or theirs, they feel like they have a good time. They leave your house feeling good. They leave your, your energy feeling good. They walk away feeling like they, they, they had a lot of, they got some meat and potatoes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And most importantly, there's peace and harmony that this person feels when they're with you. Yeah. So they're telepathically communicating with you, negotiating with you. What can we do? What can we do to move this shit forward? They don't want no karmic relationships. All right. Like I said, this is someone that's really been abstaining like they're not settling i feel like you and this person have made some type of vow spiritually some type of commitment where we're not gonna we're not gonna give to karmics anymore we're not gonna let people just come in and just someone to bypass time and someone to talk to temporarily it's like y'all are committed to doing the work and y'all got your guards up to anyone that's trying to like slide into the dms the both of y'all have made some type of spiritual devotion commitment to each other where it's like no i'm not settling for no more karmics neither am i neither are you and we're going to do the work learn these lessons and when we come into union um there won't be any karmic attachments that's gonna come or obstruct this relationship damn and someone's standing on that too someone is standing on that the point that they're trying to make right now which deck do you want me to use spirit mm -hmm. although we've come to the end of the row Still, I can't let you go. It's unnatural. You belong to me. I belong to you. I don't know who's that for. But that's from your person, the karmic. Take <laughs> how it resonates. Uh, and we started back at one. I'm hearing all these love songs. So we have positivity, faith, and optimism. You open the doorway to positive experiences and opportunities with your positive expectations and energy. Do not allow negative energy or temporary setbacks to interfere with the path you are on. Keep the faith and keep going. Wow. So be aware of what you're consuming be aware of what you are consuming. Block out any distractions. Speak words of affirmation and abundance. Keep a positive vibration. Keep peace anchored right now. Because like I said, there are a lot of 
karmic soulmates that are they ain't having it. They not having it. Okay. So there is a resistance currently going on in the ethers, y'all. Okay. There's a resistance. It's like Taurus is really, really getting over me. Like this is a real thing. Like it's a rap. All right. It's a rap rap. You have a squirrel. Just a squirrel trying to get a nut out here. Always prepared. You are the expert of hard work and hard play. Your cheerful and fun disposition is a blessing to everyone. Don't let life's distractions take you off course. Make a plan for the future and life will give you all you need. Taurus, that's all the messages that I have for you for today. I'm sending you lots of love, wisdom, and guidance on your journey. And I'll see you next time. Bye, Taurus.